The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. Something else that Norman introduced with the newest revision of, of his book that we're using here is um, signifiers. Um, because very often uh, designers misused uh, the, the affordance uh, um, information or the affordance uh, keyword um, to display where something should, should happen, not what something uh, should do. And so Norman introduced um, uh, signifiers that are telling you where to interact in the way that the affordance tells you to do. Um, so for example, if you have this, this touch screen, well, the, the screen, from our knowledge and uh, how we, uh, that we know what, what we can do with it, um, we know we can press it, we can touch it, we can uh, drag our fingers over there. But it doesn't actually tell us where to do this physically. And so we have, for example, these buttons with arrows um, that tells us where to, to interact with the software. And um, on the lock screen of, of the iPhone, there's this movement that tells you well in which direction I, I should swipe. Yes? Uh, I don't suspect this uh, slide to unlock is gone. I don't know why. It's gone? It's gone. I think everything, everybody knows how to unlock the iPhone. No, I, I, it's gone. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> still? Well, well, maybe on some they, they change that. Would, would be bad because yeah, it's a nice signifier to tell people who are not used to that to give them an indication of what, of what they should do. And signifiers can be intentional or unintentional. So intentional things are, yeah, the, the door signs will tell you, well, do this. Um, or, yeah, signs, signs in general. Or telling you on a button, uh, do, do this, click here, um, uh, select there. Um, unintentional signifiers are, for example, uh, you yeah, if you... Uh, in the winter, you're at a, uh, in a field where there's a lot of snow, and uh, there's a path through there that other people have, have gone already. Well, you know, well, this is probably the path that I should be going to get quickly to the other side. Um, or also, if um, you have a flag, it was not put there to tell you uh, uh, where the wind came from, at least in, in uh, a lot of situations. Um, but you can still get this information from uh, um, this, this flag. And it's, uh, the, the user doesn't uh, distinguish between is it intentional or unintentional, but uh, still take it as uh, a strong cues what they can do with the, um, you know, the system or what to make from, from the information. Um, yeah, misleading signifiers are something, uh, for example, I have this stare and I have this play or uh, this small part of a wall here and um, well, someone put a can or a bottle up on there and uh, for a lot of people that was then a um, signifier to well, place even more on there. So even though this was not designed to show you place your garbage here, uh, since someone does that, this was a, a signifier that you can place or you can leave your stuff here. And um, the uh, affordances and signifiers, um, they basically tell you a little bit what, how do humans approach new, uh, uh, new objects. And um, some people actually counted that, how many uh, everyday objects we encounter um, uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think per day, but overall in general. Um, that we encounter 20,000 different objects. And I'm not sure about you, but I'm not reading 20,000 manuals uh, how, to, how to use stuff. And how, how do we know what, what we can do? Um, and uh, they, they introduce this um, concept of conceptual models that when we encounter a new object, we immediately try to make sense of that. Uh, what does it do? What can I do here? And um, how should I operate this? And um, affordances are actually a, a part here that helps the user build um, correct or uh, successful um, um, conceptual models. And you as a designer of the system should keep that in mind that um, you should assist uh, the user in getting 
uh, or understanding the correct ways what they can do um, uh, with your with your system. And um, yes, so for example, with with the scissors, well, if I pick them up, I see well there are two holes there that I can likely put my put my hand through. If I um, open and close it, uh, it it works on the other side. So then. I know how uh, what I can do with it, and um, yes. So the the, uh, the good conceptual models that the the designer gets to you in a way um, they uh, uh, help you not only um, un in understanding what you can do with the object, um, but also if that's if it's a good model. Um, can help you to, to cope with problems when you when you run into uh, uh, into problems there. For example, with the scissors, if the nail in the in the middle is wedged in some way or fallen out, if I understood, well, this needs to be there so that the uh, my motion on the one side is mirrored on the other side, then can uh, help you to to fix uh, the the scissors because you understood what is the the underlying model behind that, and. Um, Conceptual models, they, they are uh, um, related to, to things, but you have more models in your head. If you think about yourself, if you think about other people, um, about stuff that, uh, the weather, for example, there's often conceptual models associated with it. Well, will it rain? Will it not rain? Well, you could measure that if you, if you have the um, uh, technology to do that. But, um, well, it's always just a prediction, and you, you have your model how things work, um, it's, it's dark outside, I'm taking my, my umbrella with me or something. So these are models that, that you have in, um, in, your, in your head. And they are formed not just um, by looking at the object, but also interacting with that about um, uh, or after what people told you, what you uh, learned, how um, you were trained to interact with the system. And in the design process, there are actually three different stages here, so to speak. So you as a designer, you have your idea what you want to do with the system. What should it do? Like, what should it mimic? For example, a, a file system that um, uh, on, on the desktop, it has these little folders. I could drag my um, uh, files in there. The folders have this fine little um, uh, edge so you can... Um, and they mimic their real-world counterpart. That is something you, you have in your head, and you uh, um, implement that, which uh, gets to the system image. Um, and the user, you, normally he doesn't talk to you, so you're not uh, very seldom have the, the chance to go to the designer, well, what was your model when you designed this? Tell me all about it. But you form your mental model rather by interacting with the system. So you build um, your idea of how the thing works uh, just by interacting with it. So um, this is good when it works. So if you um, uh, transfer the, the uh, design model that you had in a good way that a similar version ends up in, in the user's head. Um, but very often, if, if, there, uh, if there are problems, this, this breaks down. So um, there was this example um, of the trash can. I think it was up to Windows XP or something. When you had a folder hierarchy, so folders into folders into folders, files in there, and you drag that into the trash can, your, your mental model would be, well, I have that in there. The trash can is there, so I'm, I haven't deleted it directly. I can get it back out if I've uh, um, done this wrongly. Um, but I think until Windows XP, it was still, uh, when you dragged a folder hierarchy in, it was flattened. So all files were directly beside each other. You didn't preserve the, the folder hierarchy there. So there, this, this model failed because you couldn't trust when I put my folders, uh, my folder hierarchy in there, I have the chance to get it later back out intact again. Um, so uh, what, what very often happened then, we had a, another folder there with stuff that I don't think I will need, but I'm too afraid to delete or put in the trash can before, because I can't get it out anymore. So that was, is then a problem where the, the um, mental model that you have um, encountered a roadblock and uh, broke down. So what you really should keep in mind is 
of the interface design. It's about crafting the user's illusion. Very nice quote. I think an Apple UI designer some, sometimes uh, uh, said that. And uh, so you call, can call yourself magicians as well instead of designers. Um, so when a one mental model that uh, a user had in their head, if that doesn't work anymore, um, very often they form a different uh, mental model. So it adjusts over time. And you as a designer should um, really try to get um, it as precise as possible so that the model that you had in your mind that you want to transfer to the user should end up also in the user. And you can do this by providing affordances, signifiers, using the um, uh, laws that we're uh, telling you here. This content was provided by RWTH Aachen University.